Eisenhaver um, wanted to speak with all of you uh, prior to this November 21 election day coming about, which uh, we all know is only a matter of a day or two away. Over the past several weeks, uh, we've tried most earnestly to talk with you, respond to your questions. Hopefully, you feel that we've done a good job on that. Today, we would appreciate uh, confining this meeting to Mr. Guy's and Haber's comments. If you do have additional questions, I would suggest you see your supervisor on the floor tomorrow. Mac and I will spend as much time as we can on the floor also tomorrow to answer any questions you might have. But with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Guy's and Haber's Art. history, 
We had five consecutive strikes in six consecutive negotiations. In our Rockford, Illinois plant, employees were on strike 31 weeks in just a little over six years. <coughs> I, be, I believe it is legitimate to ask why these strikes happen. Many of you may not have had exposure to unions, so it is very important for you to know. These strikes happen because unions demand more than Suntran is either willing or able to give at a particular location. To digress a moment, <coughs> the steel workers would have you believe they don't have strikes. Their strike record, all 42, uh, have been posted, and you'll see it on the uh, way out tonight. You can check for yourself, but I believe you will all realize that unions are the same in one respect. The only weapon they have is a strike. It is apparent that the steel workers have had more than their share of strikes. Regardless of what union we are talking about, <coughs> here, whether it is here or somewhere else, strikes happen when unions demand in bargaining more than some friend is willing or able to pay. Before I leave this subject of bargaining and union demand, I should state that it is not already apparent that some friend is not a pushover negotiation. Its history is to do what is wise at a given time. Suntran will take a strike before it will yield to unreasonable demands that are unwise from a business standpoint. Suntran does not have a history of being bullied by union. You, you deserve to know this now. I myself and not an easy negotiator, as any of our customers are vendors. There has been a great deal of discussion on the floor on this point of bargaining. We have never threatened that, that benefits will be taken away because some trans workers voted for the union. What we have said is that when you negotiate, there are no guarantees. There is no guarantee that you will even continue to receive what you now have now. It is all subject to negotiation. Regardless of what the steel workers say, this is the law. And there is, of course, and I'm quoting, <coughs> no obligation on the part of an employer to contract to continue all existing benefits, nor is it unfairly or practice to offer reduced benefits. In the case of Ms. Bust and Instrument, page or book 133 of the National Labor Relations Board, page 1132. Over the last few weeks, we have tried to answer your questions. We have done our level best to be honest in everything we have said and done. I have personally reviewed all of the written questions and answers. You can take all of the answers as statements to follow. I must admit, and it has been enlightening to me, that one thing, one thing rings loud and clear from the group meeting and in the questions you have asked. That is, that we have done a less than adequate job in the area of employee communication. I don't mean communication during this union campaign, <laughs> but communication is on a day-to-day -day basis. Perhaps we have been too preoccupied <coughs> with getting a new business started. But I assure you, union or no union, employee communication can and will be improved. Plant safety was one subject covered in the group meeting. 
Admittedly, we have had some problems with safety. However, I hope you have taken encouragement from our response to these problems. We can, we will, and we must operate a safe plant here in Bristol. We also dis discussed our policies and procedures and our continually improving benefit program. The steel workers would have you believe we have done nothing to improve benefits recently. To the contrary, and just this year, we have first added two paid holidays to make the total 11. Introduced the Malapasic health care program at no cost to you. Substantially improved the disability program. And fourth, introduced a comprehensive dental care program at a substantial cost to the company. Another subject you discussed in your, week, in, in your meeting was waste. We have attempted to trace the policy and history of Suncran in regard to waste. You should know this. Our history has been to pay competitive wages in a given area, union or no union. It is not a union, but the area in which we operate that is determined general wage level. As a matter of fact, our highest wages happen to be paid at a union-free location. All of us would like to make more money, and you are understandably concerned about wages. As you know, I can't promise you a thing because of the scheduled election. But let me make this brief point in regard to wages. We are a new plant with a new product and with new equipment. As we, as we progress, your wages will naturally improve. We have had an unfortunate but necessary checker game with employees during the startup. We have had to shift people from here to there because of customer demand in order to maintain a stable workforce due to machine breakdown and due to the necessity to cover for absenteeism. As you know, this movement is continuing and some of it will always be necessary. However, we are beginning to work ourselves out of these startup problems. Once we have done this, the wage program will be easier to administer and considerably less confusing and inconsistent. I have just reviewed an audit of our wage administration. Frankly, there have been inconsistencies <coughs> and some inequities, and undoubtedly we have made some mistakes. I cannot promise you anything at this time because of the approaching election. I can say, however, that we intend to be fair and consistent in our wage administration. You have seen our professionally developed uh, benefit program. Well seen. It will take some time and some settling of our conditions here, but we are working towards professionalism in the administration of our wage program, just as we have it in our benefit program. To digress for a moment, a recent handout that made mention of Sunstrand profit. No business will survive without profit, and we aren't ashamed of being profitable. Without profit, this plant would not be here today. This plant is not yet profitable. Without backing from the Sunstrand Corporation, we couldn't make it. Lastly, Sunstrand Corporation profits are only 3.8% on assets. Right now, we might do better to put our money in a savings bank because the interest is higher. 
I mentioned earlier that we had tried to answer questions fully and honestly. I sincerely question whether the steel workers have done the same. John Wade has covered these misrepresentations in a memo to you. Just briefly, however, they have attempted to mislead you on the streets of violence and elections, conditions elsewhere in Suncrank, the nature of the collective bargaining process, and the nature of our programs here in Bristol. I am sure you have seen through these misrepresentations, but my point is this. If the union makes these misrepresentations and misleading statements at this point, how responsible will they be in representing you after they have you signed up? I don't want to dwell at length on what the steel workers have said to you during this campaign. However, I have personally reviewed nine local steel worker contracts. After reviewing these contracts, I can't for the life of me see why you need the steel worker. I believe it's the case of their needing you. The steel workers have negoti negotiated dozens of contracts locally. Why haven't they told you about what they have done here in the Bristol area instead of what another union has negotiated in Rockford or elsewhere. I don't know if they're ashamed of their performance, but I can say one thing. We are proud of, our, of the program we have here in Bristol, and we are improving every day. This is happening without dues, assessment, and the possibility of a strike. In my first talk, I discussed the development of our product and our short history today here in Bristol. At that time, I said that we have an excellent product that has been well received, that we have a first-class plant and equipment, and that we are developing the team to produce the product and get it into the marketplace in competition with established companies such as the company of Colton. Frankly, I was encouraged. I'm still encouraged. We have a great deal going for us. We have a growing enterprise here in Bristol that is good for our employees, good for the Bristol community, and good for Sunstrand. I'll be the first to admit, however, that this union effort concerns me a great deal. For one thing, if this union comes in here and demands these things, they are enticing you with it. In my opinion, it is reasonable for, to predict that there will be a strike here at the Bristol Bronx plant. I believe each of us should consider what a strike could do to Sunstrand compressors and to each of us as individuals. And if Sunstrand does in any strike, we would continue to supply our customers. We would do this by operating our plant with a supervisor and or replacement. Also, we would probably offload work to other plants and we would subcontract some of this work. The questions we have to concern ourselves with are these. If work is offloaded or subcontracted, would it return here after the strike? After the 1971 Rockford strike, there were 300 less jobs because work was permanently offloaded to Denver. Since it is legal to permanently replace strikers, where does this leave you if the steel workers take you out on strike and we have to hire a replacement to keep our business going? <laughs> we intend to grow here in Bristol. We see a bright future here. <coughs> However, I would 
would be neglecting my responsibility to you as your general manager if I didn't tell you what I think about this subject. Sincerely, I believe a union here would be a serious detriment to all of us. This is particularly true at this time. We have our problems here. We are working our way out of these problems. As I su suggested to you in the first meeting, these problems are typical of most startups. It has been very hard on all of us. 1975 has been a year of hard work, and we might tend to overlook the progress we have made. We have progressed. Just think back a few moments to the early months of the year and compare that to where we are today. We are moving forward. Granted, we would all like to have done better. But the important thing is that we are getting better. <clears throat> Even more important, in my opinion, and I want to bring this to your attention, is that we are really just getting started. Let me illustrate. Right now, we are at a little over 300 people. In a few years, we will exceed 1,000 at an employment level. We will more than triple our current workforce. Most of the growth will be in production. It is obvious that such growth to 1,000 will provide opportunities for upgrading and promoting. We really have just scratched the surface. Suntran didn't come to Bristol solely to create jobs. We came here to build and market our compressor. But to do this, we will be creating employment and opportunities for over a thousand people. There are a thousand jobs that didn't exist before. Frankly, that is a pleasure to me. In addition to this, Stuntrain has and will spend substantial sums of money in the Bristol area to operate our business. I know we will contribute to the well-being of this community, not only in creating employment, but also we will become a good citizen as a major business in the Bristol area. I mention these things to put our current status in perspective. We are only at the beginning. I believe we can all take a pride in our achievement. Today, we have done well, but we have ways to go. I'd sincerely like to see you reject this union and see for yourself what we can accomplish together. If I haven't said it before, I should have said it. You can get the steel workers back very easily in a year if you believe we haven't treated you fairly. You know this, I know it. On the other hand, it is very difficult to buck the union leadership to get them out once they are in. Please reject this union. Don't act prematurely. Very simply stated, we only stay in business in Bristol or elsewhere if we can make a profit. To do this, we need good people. Get and keep good people, we must be competitive in wages and benefits, and we must treat each of you fairly as individuals in the day to day, face to face contact. Fair treatment is our commitment to you. In closing, I would like to encourage all of you to vote on Friday. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for your attention and the meeting is adjourned.
final president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the person that's serving as the President Emeritus of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, with offices located in Atlanta, Georgia. Believe me when I say, I am your friend. This is an appeal to all of the workers in the J.P. Stevens and Company Incorporated plants that are scattered across the Southland. I call upon you, my brothers and sisters, to please join the Amalgamated Clothing and Textile Workers <coughs> Union. This union uh, represents the poor working people, black and white, who have suffered under this giant of a company, J.P. Stevens. J.P. Stevens was organized in the state of Massachusetts, but finally it moved to the South for cheap labor in order that it might exploit poor people. I call upon you, my brothers and sisters, to please join the Amalgamated Clothing and Textile Workers Union in order that we can put an end to the injustices that are practiced by the J.P. Stevens and Company Incorporated. Won't you cooperate with my very dear friends, Charles Jackson, the Reverend James Orange, and Richard Dick Gay. These persons have worked with me in the Southern Christian Leadership Conference across the years, and now they are working for the Amalgamated Clothing and Textile Workers Union, seeking to organize in plants all across the South. We want you to have a decent wage. We want you to have a future. We want you to have a retirement program that is adequate. Why waste all of your years working for J.P. Stevens for cheap wages and then retire and receive not adequate retirement? Won't you please heed the call of Charles Jackson, James Orange, Richard DeGay, and join the union today, the Amalgamated Clothing and Textile Workers Union. And this will be a blessing for you, a blessing for your children, a blessing for your grandchildren, and a blessing for the future of America. Thank you, Reverend Abernathy. Okay. My brothers and sisters, I am honored today to share with you in this important, this historic rally. My name is W.W. W. Finlater. I'm a Baptist minister from Raleigh. Some 30 years ago, I was pastor of the Weldon Baptist Church some four miles from this place. I come today to tell you that when you deal with J.P. Stevens, you're not dealing with an individual man who knows you, who loves you, who has your personal interests at heart. You are dealing with a structure, a great core of lawyers, bankers, accountants, interlocking boards of directories. You're dealing with a great, massive structure that is interested in making money for investors. You, as a single person, are pretty powerless over against this vast economic structure that uses you. The only way you can deal with J.P. Stevens is to have corporate power to match corporate power. Now, you must keep this foremost in your mind when you vote Wednesday. And your vote is not for yourself. It's for your family your children, your aging relatives, and for society. Try hard to win. Talk to all your friends. Convince them.
that their salvation lies in this direction. And believe, if you can, that when you work for the good of all, we can count on God being on our side. Blessings on you in the vote. Good.